Welcome back to PlayStation Live from E3. I'm joined once again by Ryan Clements. Hello. And we're here with Arthur Parsons from TT Games. And we're going to talk Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Yeah, we are. We're back with an even bigger roster of characters. We are, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Back with a sequel to 2013's Lego Marvel Super Heroes. And uh, yeah, we as a team are just super stoked to be back doing this thing, original story, throwing characters together, uh, and having a ball, you know, having fun making video games. That's what it's all about, right? I have to ask right off the bat, and I think we've even talked about this before, I don't understand how you guys handle the pressure and the expectation of essentially working with like the world's most iconic <laughs> like You have like this little original hero and you're like, I sure hope they love him. But it's like, no, 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 no. It's this yeah. huge staple of people that everyone have grown, literally grown up yeah. admiring. Yeah. How do you guys deal with that? And then how do you, you know, set your own expectations too? It, the, the easiest way to deal with it is um, we are fans ourselves. So you, 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 you take what you're given um, and effectively, you just treat it with respect because um, you've got to handle these things with the care that they need. But if you are a fan, or like a true fan, and you're going to be completely authentic to, to everything about these characters, then that makes authentic fun video games. You know, yes, I know we, we, we parody things, and yes, I know we poke fun at some of the characters, and you know, the, the more serious ones become the butt of some of the jokes but it's about that level of authenticity. And everyone on the team from, from top to bottom, they read comics, they watch movies, they watch TV shows, they watch cartoons to do the research to know exactly who these characters are and what, what they're about. What are some of the new characters people can expect for this? Uh, this sec oh, there's a whole host because, because the game's all about time. You know, Kang's out of time bringing all these universes together. We're going sort of all the way back to Jack Kirby's like Wild West Captain America, which is one of the like craziest, wackiest things I've ever seen. <laughs> so we're going way back there. We're going all the way into the future with Spider-Man 2099. Yeah, we're going all different tandems like you know, the Hydra Empire. We're going to, believe it or not, medieval England. Um, Why not? Who right? knew that there was a whole yeah. host of medieval English like superheroes and villains? Um, so how yeah. does the time link all of the characters' stories together? Because they're, they're yeah. all from different universes, they're all from different worlds. How are we going to link it all together? Yeah, so, so th the idea is that, that Kang has come. Um, Kang, Kang's a guy from the future 40th century, and he just wants to rule over everything but he's really noble about it. It's not like he's coming in with his future tech and he's just like, yeah, damn, damn, just like <laughs> vaporizing everyone. He comes and yeah, he wants to take on the best of the best at their prime and beat them in a, in a completely fair head to head. So he's bringing all these different places together in a city that he wants to rule over called Chronopolis, uh, which is again from the comics. Um, and, and the cool thing is when you're bringing all that together and you've got time travel, you can have different versions of, of, of those characters all colliding. So, you know, we can have Spider-Man Noir with Spider-Man 2099, with Spider-Gwen, all in one playable group. And they're all like, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, who are you? I got bit by a spider. It's like, you know, uh, and then obviously take them on a journey to fight all cool villains and things that are, that are kind of working for Kang. So it's just great to bring that together. Yeah, we wrote the story with a, a Marvel comic book writer um, who wrote two great sort of Kang stories, the Kang Dynasty and also Avengers Forever. So he knows Kang inside out um, and it makes for like an epic journey. It's, it's cool. You're saying that Kang is hosting the world's weirdest family reunion is basically. That's pretty much Slayer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've got when you've got multiple Captain Americas all stood just like shrugging shoulders and then you've got other characters pointing and going, Captain, Captain, Captain. It's just, <laughs> it's so good. It really is so good. But yeah, in terms of other characters, we're bringing different characters to kind of the, the, the forefront. So you play loads of characters during the, the core story, but you know, we're, we're leading with characters like She-Hulk and Miss Marvel, you know, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, just really going big on different characters. You know, really trying to make sure that it's the whole universe colliding. Yeah, and you get good representation of all these different famous franchises. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Together, yeah. Yeah. How has some of the gameplay changed from yeah. anything you learned from the first one and how you made it different for the second one? Well, the first one was like really successful. You know, people loved it. Um, I, I was like quite surprised that it, that it was so wide reaching from, you know, kids to adults and everyone in between. Um, so we looked at that and thought, 
to do a because it is a true sequel we have to better everything that we did so it has to be a bigger open world you know a more expansive like storyline you know a less linear approach as well so a bit more branching in there you know a better roster better character abilities improved combat make sure the goons aren't just like coming in and just they're pot boilers they need to be awesome and exciting so you're mixing up all different like enemy types so the player's got to think like how am i going to take this guy down how am i going to interact with this guy new mechanics including time travel and teleportation um so much going on yeah. oh, <laughs> tell me about the, the team back in the uk are just absolutely smashing this they sound like monsters yeah no they they, they all just buy into it you know we love when we start a journey like this uh, you know when we're making a game they all buy in from the start they want to deliver the best game they can so yeah really good fun can you tell me a little bit about the multiplayer too? Because you know a lot of the, yeah. these games are kind of famous for get, letting people jump in and out. But yeah, have you decided to make any changes? Or are you sticking with what works? No, no, yeah. So we've we've got the the drop in drop out co op for the for the main story and everything. But we've found a lot of people have been in touch saying, well, yeah, you know, when we're playing a level, my brother will punch me, and then <laughs> I'll be like, what are you doing punching me? And then we'll spend ten minutes just brawling in the middle of a level while <laughs> you know, the boss is in the background going. You know, you're supposed to be fighting me, not each other. And, and there's that interaction that is really interesting. So we thought, well, we could make something out of that. So we've yes. got this new mode. This, it's called the Grandmaster mode because it's hosted by the Grandmaster because he's like the master of games. Um, and we have these, these four-player arenas where it's all on one camera. So you're all pretty much, you know, brought in together. It's kind of inspired a little bit by Power Stone because I'd love that game. And um, you're, you can take any character you want into the arena. Uh, there's a couple of different modes, so there's things to do like capturing infinity gems, you know, collecting points. But ultimately, it's about taking down all the other characters, you know, either together or teaming up. And so it's like Gladiator, fun. basically. Yeah, you know, just it, fight to the death. Absolutely, <laughs> um, and it's great because you get to kind of keep the balance because the Grandmaster has the power because he's a super powerful being, so he can kind of make sure that no one's overpowered. Um, or OP, as my kids would tell me to say. Um, so, yeah, they try yep, and give it balance. dropped it in there. It was a flawless, <laughs> great little um, reference for them. Yeah, <laughs> but it's fun. It's just a really fun addition to the game. You know, people play our game in the story, and then they spend hours and hours making their own stories in the open world. So, so then give them something else to experience, like, you know, this four-player multiplayer. It's just to really deliver a really high-value game. You know, people save up their pocket money a lot of the time. So we want to make sure when they've gone and spent their money, it's like, yeah, that was, you know, I feel like absolutely, you know, I don't know what the word is, satiated. You know, I, I feel great that I've bought this game. Perfect word, satiated. <laughs> What's some of your favorite characters in and around the office that people really enjoy playing with that are new this time around? Oh, wow. Um, there are so many cool characters. Um, I, I, I like the quirkier character. So I like some of the ones that, that people don't expect. Um, so there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of those that we've, you know, that we're yet to reveal, but you know, we've got Lockjaw in. Now, when you've got a really bizarre giant dog <laughs> that can teleport, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you know, yeah I, that I is pretty so. cool. I, I, yeah. I, love, I love Lockjaw. I love the Spider-Man variants, um, uh, yeah. and specifically Spider-Gwen. Um, she's really cool. Love Star-Lord, because I'm super big Guardians fan anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about that just mixture of, of characters. So the expected, so it's a character you know, but we're also doing something where we have, it's, it's a bit like baseball trading cards. So rather than the old style grid where you just see the little head when you're in the free play, we have cards now, like trading cards, Ooh. so you can click on them, find out Aye. when they first appeared, what their powers are, what makes them tick. You know, we, we want kids to play this and then go off and read comics and discover what makes these characters great. So you mentioned Star-Lord, so I have to ask you about a little rumor that I heard that his Walkman appears and something really special happens when you play yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Him? Yeah. So um, it, every character has like quirky special moves, but with Star-Lord, he can basically just play his awesome mixtape um, and then he just kind of is dancing around. Now, when there's like 30 or 40 enemies on the screen and it's all really intense, when you do that, everyone just stops and starts dancing. So it's just... It's a cool, quirky thing, but there's a character called Black Knight from medieval England. Well, he has a similar move, but he pulls out a lute and starts playing green sleeves. So oh my it's, gosh. It's, um, yeah, it's all cool, quirky stuff. Um, our animation team kind of just, just smash it. 
He could also play Scarborough Fair. That would be really <laughs> great. I would really appreciate that. Maybe just as a bonus, like a DLC. Nice. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I only have one more question. Yeah, no, mind, great. Meredith. Uh, give me just a little hint, you know, a little inside the, inside the studio as to when you guys start, like, oh, we want to put Star-Lord into the game. How does it kind of build up into the, the Star-Lord that you get? I mean, does it start with, like, the research? And then yep. where does it go from there? Because that's the research is obvious, but then what comes yep. after that? It, it is it is a case of the research, but the research you'd think with someone like Star Lord is, you know, oh yeah, well we'll go and watch the movie, and then we know what we're doing. But it, it's not. <laughs> it's about researching every different bit. So you know, if Star Lord's in cartoons, watch some cartoons. If Star Lord's in comics, you know, what you know, read those comics. But distill the character down to the bare essentials of what make him cool. And that's, that's across the board with every character. So we take it all the way back to nothing and then go, right, what would make this character cool? And it's, you know, Star Lord's an easy one. But when you're approaching certain characters, you know, then you have to just dig a little bit deeper and, and you are going deep into the reference. And then you're thinking, right, button inputs. Because we, we make sure every button has to do something. You pick that pad up and press a button. You don't want the character to do nothing. They have to do something. Right. So then that's how you build up this layering of, how you make the character cool. Um, and, and then we sit down with the animation team and, and we'll be going, oh, yeah, we want them to do this, this, and this. And then the animation team are like, uh, <laughs> we want Spider-Gwen to get a drum set out um, from the Mary Janes and do a cool thing where she plays drums. And then you're like, okay, that's cool, <laughs> we'll do that. So yeah, it's, it's about you know, just all pulling our creative energies together. Um, it is so much fun working on a character by character basis to. To, to bring these out. It's like even Captain America, who we've done previously, this time around, he's got loads of new moves. So you can actually hold a button and he'll flip his shield up and then stand on it and he'll slide so you can just like power nice. through enemies. And it's it's great. I love working on, I love working on Lego I games. Can, I can tell. <laughs> Seems like you're a big fan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's That's all all I got, the only other question I have is, where did you get your shirt and does it come in my size? <laughs> Yeah, we we didn't even know we were getting these. So we, we turned up at E3, and I was like, yeah, I go and bought a load of new Marvel shirts. I thought, yeah, I'm all ready. And then it was like, no, here we go. And so we, we have four. There's a Kang one, a Hulk one, a oh. uh, Baby Groot one, um, Baby Groot? And, a, and, a, yeah, and a Spider Gwen one. So, yeah, they're pretty cool. We'll I'm sure, I'm sure we yeah. can dig some we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll find something. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you, Arthur, so much. Thank okay. you, Ryan, for joining me up here. We'll have a lot more about LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 coming very soon. Stick around for a lot more here today on PlayStation Live from E3. PlayStation. So, um, we have gone for an open world hub that is not just one. Lego Marvel Super Heroes had Manhattan, okay? Our game here, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, is set in a city called Chronopolis, which is Kang's brought all of these areas together. So, you'll have. Manhattan. Um, so Manhattan here is, is snowy. There's a very good reason why it's snowy. And that's because it's next to the mountains of Kunlun, which is next to a whole host of other different locations. So Phil's going to basically give us a tour as, as, as we're looking around. And yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it just looks so incredible. Yeah, this is just a, a tiny, tiny piece of it. Um, <laughs> So when, when Phil's been playing around with Spider-Man Noir, which is, yeah, <laughs> uh, which is one of a myriad of Spider-Men, by the way, in this game, because um, everyone loves different Spider-Man characters. But there is also, um, in sort of Chronopolis, you've got Wakanda, you've got Sakaar, which is where uh, Thor Ragnarok is, is going to be set. You've also got various versions of Manhattan. We've got an underwater city. So I think what if, what we can do is um, probably get Star Lord to fly around. He might be a bit quicker. Uh, for the time. Yeah, and the new storyline takes inspiration from Marvel's Avengers Forever comic series, as well as Marvel's Kang Dynasty, also called Kang War comic series. So uh, kind of talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So the, the the idea with Chronopolis is that it's it's a city that's been ripped out of time because it's. It's basically Kang's way of having his fingers in all the different pies. And because of the way it's kind of pieced together, you can pretty much do like everything and, and go anywhere. Um, obviously not right right this second, because <laughs> Spider-Man's doing his own thing, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the whole premise of this open world hub is that
that we're going to have a, a slice of everyone's favourite different location. Uh, Phil, can you go in the map, Phil? Is that working? Yep. Okay. So yeah, if we look in the map, this is a live map, so you can come straight out into the live map. And if Phil can move this round, um, technical issues, it's always <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> but we've got places like ancient Egypt, oh, we've wow. got Halle, we've got, um, like we said there, with Noir New York. We've also got, up in the sky, Atalan. We've got Nowhere, which, for those that are familiar with Guardians, it's where the first Guardians movie was based. Yeah. But all of this is in one massive open world city. So, if we can um, fly around, that's probably an easier way of doing it. Um, Star Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I blame Sharples for all of this. Um, but if we can fly around, that's we'll be so able to cool. see. So, this wibbly wobbly thing at the side, this is part of the story. This is. Uh, Kang kind of brings these places from their own time frames. You imagine you've got something from medieval periods, you've got something from the future. Very early in the game, part of what you do is bring all these walls down to have this huge open world city. And you have got, like you can see here, all of these areas merge in together. Now this is obviously, uh, the game isn't out until November. So we're working on piecing all of this stuff together. but. This is the biggest and most ambitious open world we've ever had in a LEGO game. Um, and the whole idea of this is that we've got a huge game of all the levels and, and, and the way the story unfolds, but we've got a massive open world because what we have found is that people love exploring the open world and Absolutely. all the side quests and the funny little hidden rooms and all of the quirky bits of gameplay that reference Marvel comics and Marvel movies and, and everything that's great about the Marvel Universe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so comic veteran Kurt Busiek also played a primary role in the story creation. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, like the, the, the comic runs that, that kind of inspired this, um, uh, a couple of us in the office, like they, we really love those storylines because they tell us so much about Kang. So with uh, working with Marvel, we were talking to, to Bill Roseman, who's the uh, creative director at, at Marvel Games, and he was like, well, why don't you just ask Kurt to help out? And uh, it's like, oh, yeah, why didn't we think about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we got in touch with Kurt. And oh, Kurt this is just, great. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> a Lego Sphinx. That's yeah. amazing. But you can go inside these things. It's not, you know, like, like a dressing. You can go inside the Sphinx. So there'll be gameplay inside there. There'll be gameplay inside the pyramids. Um, there'll be bizarre little Egyptian men walking around. Um, <laughs> The idea is that this is a living, breathing city made up of 20 cities. Um, and, and the whole premise behind the game is to go bigger and better than LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. Wow. Um, we want everyone that loved that game to, when they come to this game, be surprised. We want there to be surprises around every corner. So. so, if I'm not mistaken, you guys actually have a new character to share with us, right? We do. Um, Star Wars is going to have a little bit of a dance first, <laughs> clearly. It's very fitting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and this is something that obviously we care about a lot at TT Games is the personality. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, if, if Phil can uh, bring us in a, a, a quirky new character that's, that's new to the game, and you'll see there's loads of hidden characters um, that are yet to be revealed. But what we're looking to do here is bring in um, one of my favourite characters who we're yet to put in. Um, so we go across there. Yep. <laughs> it's Lockjaw from the Inhumans, which to me is just a super awesome character. It's like it's a dog for, yeah, for yeah. starters. Um, <laughs> however, a cute and cuddly dog from the Marvel Universe, he's not. Yeah. Yeah. He can teleport. He's an absolute fiend when it comes to destroying bad guys and everything else. But being able to go and dive into the Inhumans as well as everything else that's in the game. Uh, they form a really, really key part of the story um, as you get further into the game. And um, yeah, it's a great character and I think a lot of people will be really, really pleased to see Lockjaw in the game. I hope so anyway. Absolutely. Uh, so we talked a little bit about how large of a scale this, this is uh, for this game, uh, but how does that compare to Manhattan from the original? Oh, so, right, so this is a difficult thing. If I'm in the office, um, and we, we were obviously designing this and the team are like, well, how much bigger is this going to be? It's like, well, you know, just a, a little bit bigger. Um, but it actually turns out it's 
like significantly bigger. Um, but that isn't necessarily just because that's what we design. We have a great art team that decided to add to this and add to this, and, and we're all Marvel fans, so it actually got bigger and bigger. I think in terms of actual real estate, it's probably probably four or five times the size. It's huge. Um, and this is just like one tiny component. Um, we're still obviously working on all of this. But um, if Phil can, are you able to go up as Spider-Man? I don't know if you'd be able to go to uh, um, up into the air. I but can give it a see, try. With, um, as you go in every area, each area has its own theme. So as you go into the noir area, everything darkens down and, and, and all the, the colors kind of desaturate out. When you go up into the sky, you'll find that you know as you go near uh, nowhere, you get all the nebula coming around. So every area has a distinct theme. Every area has its own music. Every area has its own sort of enemies and threats and challenges. So we're really trying to, to go big on the scale of this thing. And it looks it. I love the attention to detail. Uh, so you talked about your favorite character a little bit, but yeah. do you have a favorite area maybe we should go check out that we haven't seen yet? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if Phil's going to be able to get there, but <laughs> I love the fact that we've managed to bring Lumeria into the game. Um, so, you know, again, we wanted to add some depth to this. So, yes, up in the sky we've got nowhere, um, and down below we have Lumeria, which is underground city. So if, if Phil just kind of nosedives down, we should, in theory, go down into uh, Lumeria. And there's, there's <laughs> gameplay wherever you go. So. Uh, when the game comes out in November, all of this is going to just be ram-packed full of gameplay. So, in theory, if uh, Spider-Man can swim down, oh. you can see you've got a whole underwater city down here that you're going to be able to explore. Um, and, you know, there'll be... So, this, this, I can't say who they are, but there's two <laughs> characters I've always wanted to get in the game that are in this area. And you did? Um, yeah, so we'll reveal them, obviously, further down the line. But mm -hmm. this is a great place to, to kind of find these characters. So... It's going to be incredibly exciting when people come to play the final game. Wow. Well, let's check out another character. Do you have a favorite character? Uh, I personally, I'm, I'm really simple. I really like Groot <laughs> at the moment. Um, the team did an amazing job when they do. Groot has a transform. He actually manages to get some of Kang's technology. Oh, wow. So he can change from being like a full-size Groot going down to the little small Groot that you see as a Lego minifigure that you get to run around as. Um, the team did a brilliant job of that. Uh, and so he's currently my favorite. I spent ages just running around Chronopolis as, as baby Groot. So. Oh wow! Can we can we see any of that now? Uh, I fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the joys of wireless technology. Exactly. Love, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, this will be really cool. This will be. It's this groove. is a good. This is a good challenge. Being able to do this underwater film. Yeah. But we've never tried it. <laughs> so very brave. There you go. Oh, there, he is. there we go. Give it up. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love baby Groot? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, um, that's adorable. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> but the thing is, these are just a handful of the characters that are going to be in the game, um, and the team are just absolutely killing it, adding more and more and more characters. So I think. People are going to find a really exciting roster in here. And, and as ever, if anyone at home is wanting to kind of go, you know, put this character in, put that character in, just send your ideas and suggestions to at LEGO Marvel Game, and we read everything. That's amazing. Well, this game looks so awesome, guys. And come on, new timelines, new heroes, new mechanics. Will we be able to pre-order it? Yes. So Sweet. the game's going to be coming out on November the 14th in North America. Um, it's... Yeah, available to pre-order now Ooh. and there's an awesome awesome cool deluxe edition that if you pre-order it you actually get retro guardians of the galaxy classic guardians of the galaxy including charlie 27 um, and you get that uh, early access to that so there's a load of awesome stuff in there uh, wow. i think people should definitely go check it out pre-order it you heard it here from the source ladies and gentlemen <laughs> thank you so much arthur and cool, phil for coming out today and Cheers, being with you. us this is awesome. Thanks, guys. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Cheers.